In a previous video, I talked about the single index model. And the single index model simplifies the portfolio selection process by reducing the number of inputs. And it does this by finding the relationship between each pair of assets through some market index. And the basic idea is, is that when you're talking about risk in a portfolio, you don't care about how risky each individual security is. You care about how it interacts with the other securities in the portfolio. And so there are going to be lots and lots of covariance terms. And if you have to calculate each one directly, that's a lot of inputs. But if you figure out the relationship of each asset to some market index, you can then figure out the relationship between each pair of assets through that market index. So I want to extend this model by talking about the multi-index models. And the question is, is what if returns are generated by more than one index? So before we do that, let's take a quick look and review the single index model. The single index model said the returns for security I are determined by some market index. And if you took the expected return of this, you would simply get that the expected return equaled some intercept term, some constant term, plus the relationship or the sensitivity of our security to the average return of some market index. The variance for the security is going to be equal to beta i squared times the variance of the market plus some variance of the error term. And then the relationship between each pair of assets i and j can be found by taking each security's beta and multiplying them together and then multiplying it by the market, the variance on the market index. So here's what the basic multi-index model looks like. And it doesn't look all that different from the single index model except we have a lot more indexes here. All right, if I cut it off right here, we would have simply a single index model. Okay, the only thing we've done differently is using notation of using A and B instead of using alpha and beta. But it basically looks the same, just more indexes. And here we're going to have a general number of indexes. We're going to assume we have L indexes. So we make certain assumptions and we define certain terms. We're going to define the variance of stock I, or the residual variance of stock I, okay, variance of the error term is just going to be defined as sigma squared EI. The variance of index J equals sigma squared, okay, I, capital I, okay, uppercase I, J, and J goes from 1 to L, okay, so those are num our number of indexes. By construction, we're going to assume that the variance, I'm sorry, the mean of the error term, EI, is going to be equal to zero for all stocks. We're going to assume that the covariance between indexes J and K are also equal to zero. And we're going to assume that the covariance between the residual for stock I and index J equals zero, okay? And maybe I shouldn't say this is an assumption. It's by construction. That is, we set it up so that these are, in fact, the case, okay? You can create uh, the indexes so that this will be the case, that the covariance between index J and, indexes J and K will be equal to zero, okay? We're also going to assume that the covariance between EI and EJ is zero for all stocks as long as I does not equal J. And I, I probably shouldn't do this, but you know, here I'm using J as a subscript for stocks, where before I was using it for indexes. Okay, so if we took the expected return, it again looks much like the single index model, except we have more terms here. The error term drops out because we said the expected value of the error term was equal to zero. Okay? And so we get 
uh, that the expected return for security i equals ai, this constant, plus we have these sensitivities to each index, okay, as measured by these b. So bi1, okay, it's sensitivity to the first index times the mean of the first index or the expected return of the first index plus bi2 times the expected return of the second index, etc. The variance of return is going to be sigma squared i and it's going to be bi1 squared times the variance of the first index plus bi2 squared times the variance of the second index, etc and then plus that variance of the error term. So again, this doesn't look that different from the single index model. In the single index model, we just would have one term here, so these terms would disappear. We'd still have this variance of the error term. So the model seems to be intuitively much like the single index model. Okay, And the covariance between security I and security J is, again, very similar except we have more terms. Okay, In the single index model, it would just be bi1 times uh, bj1 times that index. Okay, But here, we have to add in this relationship to the second index plus the relationship to the third index. So it looks very, very similar to the single index model. Again, if we had only one index, all of these other terms would disappear, and this would look very much like or exactly like our single index model. Okay, so it turns out that if we use this multi-index model, the analysis requires 2n plus 2l plus l times n estimates, where n is the number of securities, l is the number of indexes. For the single index model, it's 3n plus 2. We had to have n betas, n alphas, and n variances of the error terms. Plus, we had to have the expected return of the market and the variance of the market. Okay, For the full Markowitz full variance covariance analysis, we need 2n plus n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Okay. Uh, terms, we have n expected returns, we have n variances, and we have n times n minus 1 divided by two different covariance terms. So let's take a look at a little table here so we get an idea as to how the multi-index model helps us. So we're going to put in a number of securities over here in the left-hand column, and we're going to assume we have five indexes. So if you're using the full Markowitz analysis, you're going to have 65 inputs. If you're doing the single index model, you're going to have 32. Okay, So you've reduced it. With the multi-index model, it's actually not any better off here uh, because you don't, don't have very many securities. But as we increase this to 20, here you need 230 for Markowitz, only 62 for the single index model, and 150 for the multi-index model. So a bit of a reduction here in the number of inputs. Let's go to 100 security portfolio. You need 5,150 inputs for the Markowitz analysis, only 302 for the single index model, but um, you need more in the multi-index model of 700. Here you need 720, but that's a lot less than the 5,000 150 if you're only using five indexes. Of course, if you were using more indexes, then you'd have a greater number here. But you can see that you can certainly reduce the number of inputs using the multi-index model. If you think the multi-index model provides a better, uh, a better way of looking at returns, okay, it gives you a better estimate of returns than the single index model, it can still be used to reduce the Markowitz analysis and perhaps give you better estimates.